Hello, everybody. I'm uh, delighted to be able to join you on this uh, pre-recorded message. Uh, not very long before your talk, actually. I'm here in uh, Aspen, Colorado, where I came for a 60th birthday for uh, Ron Beller, who's been a coach to many of the senior leadership at MAPS, also to Rachel Yehuda and others, and who's been advising us on um, how to move forward as we expand. Uh, so I'm not able to be in person with you now. But I wanted to start out by talking about uh, what's going on in Ukraine and to mention that we had six Ukrainian therapists that were going to be going through our next training program. And Elizabeth Ames, who's from the Boston area, who may be um, on this uh, meeting on Zoom today, um, has been helping us to uh, coordinate events in Ukraine. She was a, sold her house and was about to move to Ukraine and had purchased a plane ticket for several days after the war began, and so she wasn't able to go. But we've been having discussions afterwards about what we can do, and this is just part and parcel of MAPS's uh, larger huma humanitarian mission to bring MDMA to refugee camps and places all over the world, countries that are deeply traumatized but may or may not have lots of therapists or psychiatrists and certainly don't have lots of money. So that would be done in a humanitarian way. What we had been thinking about for Ukraine, what Elizabeth and I had been talking about is now some of the therapists are in the war effort and hopefully they will survive, um, but that what might we be able to do? And so in the U.S. and for FDA, we work with chronic PTSD, which is six months or longer. And after somebody has chronic PTSD, what that means is they're not likely to succeed in getting better without some sort of intervention. But for people that are initially traumatized, um, there's a natural resilience and a lot of people get better. So that if we were to work with people right after the trauma to show a difference between those treated and those not treated, we'd need to have large numbers of subjects, which could get inordinately expensive. And then it's not clear you know, whether this would um, be cost effective also, because you're giving it to so many people who may or may not need it. But on the other hand, could MDMA in one session be used as a prophylactic against getting PTSD? So what Elizabeth and I discussed as a possibility would be one day to do something if we could get permission in Poland or elsewhere where a lot of the refugees are and to treat 100 or more uh, with just one session of MDMA, have a control group of the same number of subjects who don't get any treatment, get whatever a standard of care, and then look one, two, three years out to see which groups develop PTSD and which groups don't. And maybe we can demonstrate that one session is sufficient to um, prevent the development of PTSD in many patients. So that's just a, a concept for what we'd like to do. We don't have trained therapists in Poland. We don't have uh, import permits, protocols, all of that. But um, I just wanted to start by sharing the tragedy of, of what's going on in Ukraine and, and what we need to be doing. I was um, in Washington last weekend for the Psychotherapy Networker Conference, and I was with um, Senator Bernie Sanders, VA staff person in charge of all VA events. And um, we went for a walk around midnight around Washington, D.C., and I wanted to show them something um, in particular. It was also with John Lubecki, who's our... Um, uh, veteran, um, been through our studies, advocate and lobbyist in D.C. But we went for a walk and we ended up at the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars building. And there's a monument in front of it that um, in the past I've um, really enjoyed uh, getting stoned and wandering around cities at the in the dark of night and kind of encountering things in a different way without a lot of people there. And so I had, this probably 30 years ago, wandered around D.C. one night and had discovered something interesting on this Veterans of Foreign Wars monument. And it's kind of like a um, triangle, and it goes up several stories, and it has all these um, sculptures, reliefs about uh, different wars that the uh, U.S. was in. Um, and you can see it. It's on the corner of a street. You can see both sides. If you walk around it onto the grass, though, there's a, a, a backside to it. Um, and you can see this um, at the very base. It's interesting. It, it's, um, it's like all these uh, memorials to people who uh, soldiers died in foreign wars. 
Um, and at the bottom, it's a picture of the globe, and it has the statement from the UNESCO Charter on top of it. And I wanted to, to show this uh, file from Bernie Sanders' office and John Lubecki also. And what it said was this quote, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. And I said, this is it. This is about psychedelic psychotherapy and psychedelic unitive mystical experiences. This is what they're talking about. I don't know if the veterans of foreign wars people who designed the sculpture knew they were um, speaking to me about psychedelics, but this idea that the defenses of peace must be constructed in the minds of men, that that's really the larger issue for us for mass mental health. Um, so one of the things that I'd like to say now is that Mike Millette, who was the number two person at commercialization for Moderna, is now working for MAPS to plan our commercialization. And he started uh, about 10 days ago. He's our major pharma hire. He's doing fantastic. He's meeting with all sorts of um, therapists, patients, uh, the clinical staff. He's already got ideas of ways we can expedite things and um, move forward faster in certain ways. Um, Mike's wife is a therapist, and that's what gives us a lot of hope as well. He's never done psychedelics, but he's uh, really started out strong, and we're very excited about working with him and having him really guide our plans for commercialization. Now, he doesn't understand training of therapists, and so we are being clear that we're focused on quality over quantity as the initial training program starts, and we want to really make sure that the therapists get the proper training, supervision, and in particular, we're concerned about how do we give MDMA to therapists as part of their training, and um, we're exploring various options in other countries. We're ex exploring how to make that possible post-approval in the U.S., um, but I think Mike is really um, more mission-aligned on um, quality care for patients, and that will not be just rolling out as many therapists partially trained as we can during this period of data, data exclusivity. Um, so we now have the advice of someone who has sold billions of dollars of a drug all over the world, and we are moving towards globalization of a lot of different things, so it's just exciting that Mike Millett has now joined our team. Um, we have now accrued 86 out of the 100 people in the second phase three study. We're inching up towards uh, all 100. Um, around two months from now, we think the interim analysis will be, and in eight, October, we think we'll have finished the second phase three study. And if the results are statistically significant and no new safety problems arise, which we don't think is happening, or at least hasn't happened yet, as far as we can tell, then uh, the drug will be approved by the FDA, but it'll probably take another year or so for FDA review and also for DEA rescheduling. We're already working in a lot of the states. Um, so we're moving forward there. We're uh, starting a site in Barcelona. We've got a lot of um, training of therapists going forward in Europe. Uh, we just shipped MDMA to Australia. We've done some stuff in Brazil. So you know, things are really moving forward great. In our fundraising efforts, we have, we have this Vine Ventures deal. It's, it's the first um, program to raise funds other than philanthropy for us. Um, it's a $70 million thing. It's not really venture capital and that if it succeeds, you get 10 X your return. It's not philanthropy and that, um, you will get money back. Um, and it's, um, more two to three X, um, at the end of 10 years, it expires completely. So it's uh, regenerative financing. We're calling it. Um, there's a waterfall structure, which means that as we make uh, potentially more income, people's the percentage of uh, what we give back to people goes down. So it's a percentage of revenue, not profits, because we're not really going to be making profits. We're going to be reinvesting the money in more research, more public education, more harm reduction, more, more work that MAPS will do in drug policy reform. So it's a percentage of revenue. Um, a big transition for us was Elizabeth Koch uh, putting in $10 million. So we're now about $45 million and we've got a bunch of people that are um, considering um, the remaining, but we're, we're looking for more people if they're interested. So we want to get up to $70 million. The other new innovative wrinkle is that, is that people are donating from their donor-advised funds and from their foundations. And that way, if there are profits returned, it goes for charitable purposes. 
um, we're actually proposing to one potential um, investor that um, the funds that go back to them would be then redirected towards patient assistance programs for all the people that are underinsured or uninsured who can't otherwise afford MDMA assisted therapy for PTSD. So that um, we think that if we need, when we do probably need additional funds to raise, uh, but we would maybe, if we can, speak to people with their foundations and try to get the funds invested from um, philanthropic funds so that the proceeds, as I said, go back to philanthropic purposes. Um, if we could manage that, that would be um, a really even better refinement. Of course, uh, donations are best, but um, the scale of money that we need in the short time frame is, is pretty large for that. But, but maybe that will work. Um, I had an interesting thing happen with um, Bob Parsons, just to say that uh, synchronicity is helping us. Um, Bob Parsons um, has donated $2 million to us. His wife, Renee, is very interested in um, health equity and that we have been um, working with him now. He, he also gave a million a year for five years to Rachel Yehuda at the Bronx VA. He's a Vietnam vet, a billionaire from GoDaddy and other businesses. Um, and he and I had not spoken for about three months. Um, and I ended up um, about uh, a week ago um, sending him an email. And it was outlining sort of a variety of different issues and bringing him up to date. And um, it didn't require him to contact me back, um, but it was kind of an update. And then um, about five minutes later, he responded, he called me and I was like, terrific. You know, Bob, you've just um, read my email and now we can talk. Uh, how exciting. And he said, what email? He said, I don't read my emails. You know, you got to text me. I said, you don't read my email. You know, how did you know to call? And he said, well, I just had this um, feeling that I hadn't talked to you for months and I wanted to call you. And so it was just this... Uh, who knows, other way of communication, but the timing was great. And now Bob is also um, going to explore participating in this fine deal. So the universe is working on our behalf in, in many ways. Um, while I was in Austin for uh, South by Southwest um, earlier this week, um, we did have Brian Zur who did this Vine Ventures deal and I made some talks. I was on uh, panel with Constructive Capitalism with David Bronner and others. It was really, really good. But I also uh, toured a production facility that produces uh, pharmaceutical drugs for the pharma industry. And we're exploring an idea to have a second supplier of MDMA. And this particular supplier in Austin has relationships with people that grow certain kind of piper plants in Peru that have saffron. And it's a starter material for making MDMA. MDMA does not appear in nature. And if you get the saffron, you still need to have uh, synthetic chemicals or other chemicals to uh, do a variety of reactions to get MDMA. But currently, our MDMA is made in England, and it uh, comes from a petroleum base. And that's where they get all these organic molecules. But this second facility might indeed come from um, plant sources, and it's not completely from plants, but people love this idea of, oh, it's from plants, it's, it's good. But with David Bronner, we were talking about we could do fair trade, we could do reciprocity, all sorts of things to the uh, communities that grow the initial plants. So we may be exploring that. It's kind of an exciting um, option. And then um, on April 19th, coming up, we're going to be having an auction of NFTs, non-fungible tokens of various art for maps. This would be charitable. And we've had some of the leading um, NFT artists of the world have donated pieces. There's a group called OpenSea that handles uh, NFT auctions and things like that. And so we are um, excited and hopefully we can um, inspire enough people through the generosity of these artists that have donated their pieces to um, have uh, substantial uh, multi-millions of, hopefully, money coming to us for research purposes from charitable auction of NFTs. So keep your eyes open for that. And we are um, overall um, very excited. Things are moving forward inside the VA. Uh, there's a 
group that's now working to try to get as much Republican support for work in VA, uh, things I think are very promising. Um, I might as well um, mention some of the negatives. Uh, uh, cover story has been um, trying to scandalize um, something that was indeed a scandal, that one of our um, therapists had uh, sex with a patient in phase two, completely unethical, um, but it's being blown up um, in ways that I think are um, not good journalism. Um, so we do have a response to that on the website. If people are interested, uh, you could go to uh, Cover Story on the MAPS website and you'll see our responses to that. Um, it's a complicated issue. As we get more prominent, uh, you know, we'll have more scrutiny, in which we welcome because we are interested in uh, patient safety and patient outcomes. Um, it's just a shame that there's a um, emphasis on uh, misleading information and scandal uh, rather than really trying to get to learn what lessons can be learned. We do have a patient bill of rights that we're putting out. We're doing whatever we can. Uh, this um, cover story also talked about um, uh, people who felt that the three session model, people in our study was not sufficient and they needed more treatments which um, we cannot provide uh, by protocol. But post-approval, people who need more sessions can get them. So I thought it was interesting that the critiques were from people who said that the therapy was worthwhile, but it wasn't sufficient. They needed more rather than that the, the therapy was, was terrible. Um, so I, I think that it's um, important for us to listen as much as we can to these criticisms, try to take what's uh, valuable to them and then um, implement procedures and policies that will do the best to minimize those uh, situations. But we're dealing with humans. Uh, therapists have their flaws as well as everybody else. Um, but we're going to continue going forward and trying to do the best that we can. And I'd like to uh, look forward to the next uh, group where hopefully I can present in person. Um, overall, I just feel like um, we have um, had a lot of stresses from growth and we've had a lot of things that weren't ideal that have uh, happened and we're learning from them. And now I kind of feel with Mike Millett helping us guide the commercialization uh, that we're sort of digested a lot of this growth and I feel excited about the, the work ahead and this goal of uh, FDA approval still designed for MDMA assisted therapy for PTSD before the end of 2023. And the long-term goal of mass mental health and a spiritualized humanity. And it's great to be speaking to you all. And uh, I wish you all well and look forward to the next meeting.